Hello and welcome back to Life, Death, Afterlife and all that jazz. Uh, today we're doing our chapter on mediumship. And in so doing, we're venturing into a different section of the course. You know, as is my habit, we sort of want to, um, 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 uh, we want to take a deep dive every once in a while uh, to, to, to learn about a religious tradition. Then, then we want to come up and see, okay, where are we in the course? And go back to this metaphor of sailing versus scuba diving. And so, you know, we've taken a deep dive into some of the Abrahamic religions. Well, all of them, in fact. <laughs> Uh, and then we came up for air, for a little checkpoint. And then we took a deep dive into the wonderful world of Hinduism and Buddhism. And then we came up for air for a little checkpoint. And now, um, before this deep dive, let's contextualize yourself. Like, what the heck is this course all about? It's about death. We don't even know what death is. It's about afterlife. We don't even know if there is an afterlife. So what am I doing here? What is this textbook all about? You know, what are the attitudes towards death that impact our consciousness? Uh, consciously or unconsciously? What are our assumptions about death? What are our beliefs about death? And um, really, death is, guess what, about life. <laughs> because death is the thing that defines life. It, it, the, it, the termination of life is what gives life its, 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 its temporary uh, uh, and, 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 and precious dimension. Um, not only is it such that we're going to die, so we have limited time, it's such that, well, what happens after we die, what we think might happen after we die, is going to inform or impact how we live our lives. We talked about this a couple of times about our culture's attitude towards death, particularly coming from a, a secular or materialistic or empiricist uh, point of view. And we've also talked about the utter contempt that we see in most modern circles uh, regarding the paranormal and the supernatural. And that is actually the very piece of the course that we're about to venture into. We've looked at some worldwide attitudes, uh, content, philosophies, ideologies, theologies about death in the afterlife. And now we're going to steer clear of beliefs for a moment and break them out and talk about experience, experiences, purported experiences. You know, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, well, you know, my religion says that when we have one life and when we die, we go to heaven or hell. But me and my current wife had this sort of uh, mutual recollection of a past life on the earth. Well, <laughs> the first of that is a belief system that's given to you by your religious tradition. The second of that is uh, some kind of experience, whether it's real or unreal or something in between, it's what you experience. So how do we reconcile our experiences of the paranormal um, pertaining to death in the afterlife with belief systems of the world? Uh, do the belief systems of the world, are they derived from, are the evolutes of experiences that people have had? Are they all sort of just ideologies that are, that are, that are crafted for social and political purposes, right? These are some of the interesting tensions uh, that we're going to engage, yes? Um, uh, there are three sections uh, that we're looking at in the course. We'll do a comparison chapter at the end for the next test, uh, which will be the last test. You'll be responsible for those four chapters. And there'll be 10 questions uh, from each of the chapters or sections, I, could, I should say, because the, the last section is, is uh, multiple chapters, but they're short chapters. So I'll be assigning you sections thereof. So uh, the final test will be 40 marks, 10 marks from each of the remaining units, three from these paranormal sections and the final form of the uh, comparison. Unit. Yes, clear. We'll have plenty of time in Q&A to go over the midterm and the remainder of the course and all that jazz. Today, the first of the three paranormal experiences, mediumship. Well, what is mediumship? Like, like what does that mean? What does it mean to be a medium? You know, a medium is, you know, uh, something that uh, is a conduit. You know, um, metal is a better conduit for heat than is wood. Yes, that's, so, that's sort of self-evident for anybody who's, who's tried to hold a, a, a metal implement without a pot holder <laughs> while they were sitting in the stove. We can experience that. But we're not talking about things that are available to, to sort of physical investigation or purview. We're talking about either things that are completely made up, things that are completely diluted, or things that are beyond this world, otherworldly, 
right? So a medium is one who functions as a conduit purports to function. You know, we're going to bracket out the question of whether Billy the Believer or, or Debbie the Doubter should, should win out in this, in this argument. We should be able to see it from both perspectives. And that's the healthiest way, and that's sort of the richest way in coming at your own perspective in, in a centered way. One does so by, by understanding, perhaps even empathizing with various perspectives, and choosing one's own perspective irrespective. That's how one knows that one is coming at it from an authentic way that really makes sense. When one is not interested in um, entertaining the perspectives of others, there's always an underlying issue there, an emotional issue, a fear, a doubt, a projection. I don't want to hear it. When one's like that, then then one's not in one's belief in a centered way. It's uh, impulsive or instinctive. There, there's, there's an emotional component. So whether or not we believe in the occult or believe in the paranormal, that's not a question. Whether we have disdain for it or whether we're dismissive of it uh, categorically, carte blanche, that's, that's the question. That, that, that's what we're solving for. So, so mediumship is, is, is somebody who is a medium between the here and now and what's not here and now in the physical sense, uh, the beyond. Um, uh, the implication in this, in this unit is someone who can channel or be medium for disincarnate, for disembodied, for non-physical uh, entities, which are the remnants of the entities who have passed. Now, you know, we may think of this as either the Ba or the Ka of Egyptian religion. We may think of this as, you know, uh, uh, comparable to 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 Jesus, uh, Jesus is um, uh, the apparition of Jesus after uh, he was raised from the dead. I mean, there are a number of ways with which one can interpret this, and that is the work of religion. Right now, we're trying to contend with the actual experience without getting too heavy-handed with the interpretation. And so, has anyone experienced a medium? Has anyone been in the presence of one? Does anybody know someone who does this for a living? Uh, does anybody, has anybody had a reading, either starting off as a diehard believer or, or, or gullible or, 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 or impressionable, or even starting off uh, cynical in some way, skeptical? I mean, has anybody uh, known somebody who's had such a reading? You see, at the end of the class, uh, towards the end of the class, I'll show you some video clips. And then it, they, make, they may make for some provocative discussion. I'll turn the camera off before we do that because I don't think I'll be allowed to upload the clips for obvious reasons because they're not mine. But what do we make of this? What do we make of psychic mediumship, right? Well, there are people who have tried to research this. And I say try because really I don't know how successful they've been. But you know, our, our text talks about this Society for Psychical Research Right, a scholarly society formed in the 1900s to investigate this, th these varieties of individuals purporting to be conjuring up spirits from the dead. Yeah. And perhaps unsurprisingly, uh, they, they've revealed tons and tons and tons of charlatans, of, of hoaxes, of frauds, of, of, uh, of sort of um, sleight of hand, you know, uh, tricks, you know, magic in, in, in the sort of, uh, in the modern sense, as opposed to the, uh, as opposed to the spiritual sense, right? Uh, unsurprisingly. Nevertheless, can we conclude that just because uh, a great many purported mediums are frauds, they're charlatans, just because that's the case, does that mean that there are no real mediums? Just because a whole bunch of mechanics are crooks or lawyers are crooks, you know, so may go the stereotype. Does it mean that, 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 that law has no virtue and, and there are no ethical mechanics out there, right? Certainly there's a number of frauds. Certainly most of us can spot it a mile away with the branding and the, and the, the promises, right? Certainly it's abundantly clear that there are no shortage of people who are either deluded, self-deluded, or you know, um, ethically unsound <laughs> to be preying on people in their time of need and giving them the false promise of connecting with a loved one. Surely there's no shortage of such people who walk the earth. But then can we take the leap? Can we know that you know, all mediums are fake because there are a number of fake mediums? 
you know, there was one, one fellow, uh, Daniel Douglas, Dun Douglas Home. Uh, and as I mentioned before, my job isn't to regurgitate what's in the text for you. You know what's in the text. Uh, everything in the text is fair game. I'll tell you specifically if something is not, or if um, 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 something is definitely to be emphasized. Uh, it's, it's generally a, a good rule of thumb that when folks put things on slides, it's important to the instructor in some way or, or to their, their understanding of what you should be understanding. Um, so having said that, I'm not going to give you the play by play. You can all read about the various experiments and the various data, but I just want to bring uh, uh, Daniel Douglas home up as one who was subject to a great deal of scrutiny and investigation. And I think the way that Moran phrases it, and it's probably prudent, he goes, he wasn't proven to be a fraud. <laughs> no one's saying he's a medium. <laughs> All we're saying is we can't prove or we couldn't prove or no one proved that he was a fraud. People who were trying, professionally trained to, to sort of um, separate the wheat from the chaff. So, you know, there's this lend credence. Aha, you see, there's a bona fide psychic medium. I don't know. That's for you to decide. Um, uh, Wallace, uh, Wallace uh, in the early days of studying this, classify sort of the marks of physical mediumship. We'll talk a little bit more about physical mediumship versus mental mediumship. But physical mediumship is where there's stuff that actually happens physically. An object may move during a session. You know, the individual can touch fire and not get burnt. Um, there may be the channeling of an actual piece of artwork or physical musical performance, not just disembodied sounds right? But an actual performance in the physical sense. You may have a, a glimpse of an apparition that's physical in some way. Uh, there may be a, uh, something in a photograph. Yeah. You know, what's really, really interesting about all of this is that uh, what's pointed out, I think it's a good point, that there are only two of these phenomena. Let's bracket out whether they think they're hoaxes or not whether one thinks they're hoaxes or not. There's only two of these phenomena that are directly potentially indicative of an afterlife. So what you hear sounds from the beyond. Assuming that's true, does that mean it was from someone who's passed on to the afterlife? So what you're channeling drawings? Could you not be possessed by a jinn, for example, in the Islamic world or some other or spirit? Does it mean that uncle so-and-so who was a great painter has decided to possess your body and make you paint like he did? Right? Only if someone is claiming to sort of, if someone's uh, having a sighting or, or, or a photograph of something that appears like someone who's no longer alive uh, and apparently not fully dead, <laughs> only in those cases might you have potential evidence for, for afterlife, for, for, for something that happens when we're, uh, for death to be a threshold and not an end, a threshold, right? A passage into another means or plane of existence. You know, uh, these were the marks of physical mediumship, right? And you can all read the glossary of our text. This is just verbatim from the glossary. Appearance of spirits, tapping, manifestations. Um, and so many of those types of practices were thoroughly debunked. And in the modern world, we don't see so many of those sort of physical uh, acts of mediumship or purported mediumship. What we typically see in the modern world, when we see it, see it at all, uh, is a mental mediumship. Spiritual communication that focuses on the conveyance of verifiable information in order to prove the ongoing existence of a, disincarnate, a discarnate person, a disembodied person, a person without a body, a person whose body is left, a person whose body has died. You know, when they die, is it they who've died or is it their body who is it their body which has died? Right. So, so this idea, and certainly there's a number you may have heard of or not, I don't know. I'll bring up one in, uh, in the discussion today and we'll watch a short YouTube clip of a reading. And then we can talk about it. What do we make of this woman who 
uh, appears to be giving a medium, uh, a psychic medium reading, channeling the, 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 the departed loved ones of the people in the room. We could talk about that. Is she a charlatan? Does she have a gift? Is it some combination? Does it evidence an afterlife? I don't know. But we'll see an example of a purported mental medium after this lecture. Now, despite all of the bad actors and the rotten apples that have kicked out, been kicked out of the medium tree, knocked out of that tree, uh, nevertheless, we have these we have these figures who really defy skepticism. One such figure is uh, Leonora Piper. You can read all about her story. And she was, um, she was met and, and sort of uh, vetted by none other than William James himself. And after a great deal of exposure and sort of testing and, 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 and observation, he was convinced that she wasn't, um, that her intentions were good and that she had some extraordinary ability. Now, she was even um, vetted or researched, scrutinized by one Richard Hodgson, who was a member of this, this society for psychical research, right? And what did he do? He took careful notes during her readings to sort of maybe catch her in a lie, perhaps, or, or sort of spot inconsistencies. And on top of that, well, okay, well, she, what she's saying is accurate. Well, maybe... It, she got that information from somewhere. And if we don't believe it's possible to get information from spirit, then obviously she got it through some mundane means. So she has informants, right? Wrong. <laughs> she was surveyed. They hired private investigators. There was no way, this is long before the internet. Yeah. There was no way she could be receiving information from others about the people who were going to see her. In fact, she didn't even know who they were gonna bring in next to be read. Uh, so by the end of the, his investigation, although he was a staunch skeptic, um, he had no choice but to accept the validity of some ability uh, on her behalf to connect with departed souls. I know, I know, Debbie the Doubter is saying, but, you know, there's probably something in there he missed. You know, some way she was giving that information. Because information only comes from the outer world. It only comes through our senses. And Bailey, the believer, is like, listen, lady, through our senses. That's sensory perception. This is extrasensory perception. Get with the program. It's ESP. Is that, why is that so difficult for you to wrap your mind around? <laughs> so you can have these debates with your friends, your colleagues, or family members, or yourself. And they're interesting debates. But... Lo and behold, we have figures who, who appear to have something, um, something uh, beyond the normal, paranormal occurring within them. Um, you know, James concludes that uh, in his study of religion and, and mysticism and, and, and whatnot is that it's just, it's just that maybe at some point in, in English society in the 19th century, these things became in vogue, but this isn't new. <laughs> you know, psychic mediums is not new. <laughs> we all know what the oldest, world's oldest profession is, and maybe the world's second oldest profession. <laughs> yeah? This is not new by any stretch of the imagination. That doesn't mean that, it, that, that the, it's, it's long lived, so we should give it credence. It could be that, well, well, Billy the Believer might say, you see, people have had these gifts. There have been great virtuosos in every tradition, uh, uh, prodigies of sorts. There have been Einsteins and Mozarts and, 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 and mediums in every crevice of creation. But you just won't look at the evidence. And uh, Debbie the Doubter might say, look, man, people have desperately missed and wanted to connect with their dead loved ones forever. Of course, they've decided to create these niches for people. Of course, they've decided to go along with these delusions for the sake of their psychological processing. <laughs> Duh. You know, we talk about the paranormal, right? The occult, these larger than life abilities. Um, but let's parse out, you know. Uh, we can't just clump everything in together. And be like, oh, that guy has a psychic ability. Therefore, my grandmother can still hear my thoughts, who's no longer alive. 
the, the paranormal in and of itself isn't necessarily indicative of an afterlife. Now, is it? Right? You know, uh, there's a, another case of this, this, this psychic medium named Mrs. Garrett. That word they use in the text, I didn't know what that word meant either, but it's an air balloon. Okay. She had a vision of an air balloon crashing. It was so real to her, she expected to hear about it that night on the news. Nothing, nada, niente. Okay. Okay, maybe it was mind play. Maybe it wasn't a vision. Maybe it was my imagination. Okay, great. And then later, or some years later, she had it again. And she's like, okay, well, if this is a vision, it has to be connected to an actual air balloon, uh, uh, airship taking off. So she checked and there was one that, that matched what she saw in her vision that was scheduled to take off that day. And she called the tower and begged them not to launch it. Well, what are they gonna say? They're like, listen, lady, uh, you might need some couch time, darling, or a hug or who knows what. But uh, yeah, we're gonna launch. <laughs> we're gonna launch the ship. Boom! It blew up. Coincidence, right? Yep, pretty good coincidence. That's a pretty fascinating coincidence, there, isn't it? Well, turns out, a couple days later, she gets a visitation from one of the crew members who died in the crash, and the crew member explained to her in technical terms, what went on during the flight and why the plane, the airship crashed. So she calls the base up and says, hey, you, you won't believe this, but I just got a visitation from somebody who was on the crew of that airship. And this is what they said happened. And they're like, well, this is obviously technical information that A, as a layperson, she wouldn't be able to understand. And even if she did, I mean, we are we are technicians or experts, we can understand it and follow it, but we have no, we would have no way of knowing that's exactly what happened in that ship. And based on the wreckage, it appears that that is the most plausible thing that went wrong. Coincidence, right? Right. right. <laughs> but so, so who cares? Like, okay, so she is so 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 mediumship is possible. Some people are gifted with the ability to see what we cannot see with our eyes through extra sensory perception. That doesn't mean that they're perceiving dead people, does it? I mean, the first part of her vision was what? What? Okay, she sees an airship uh, crashing. Well, the airship has no soul. It's not a dead person. It hasn't even happened yet. So it's a premonition about the future. What does it have to do with an afterlife? See, that's a whole different category of psychic phenomenon, isn't it? But then she's visited by somebody who died in the crash. And that clearly is related to the afterlife. So how do we begin to make sense of this? The easiest thing to do if you want to sleep at night is just dismiss it. At all costs, cling to your reason. Cling to the physical data like it's your only raft in an ocean of mystical despair. And then you'll sleep just fine. So one concept is that, look, there are people that have these abilities and these abilities aren't necessarily related to visitations. If I'm doing a psychic reading for you and I'm like, you know what? Uh, you have a sister who's passed and, you know, she's wear a red ribbons in her hair. She had sort of curly locks. She was about seven years old. I see a picture of her in her fields. Oh my God. How did you know? It may be that the spirit of the sister is visiting that person from the afterlife, or maybe they're picking it up from you. Maybe they're reading your mind. Maybe they're reading your thoughts. Maybe they're reading your hopes, your expectations, your memories. I mean, this is out there regardless. But 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 let's let's think. Let's 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 use our critical thinking even about uh, the paranormal, right? The presence of one paranormal thing doesn't indicate uh, the presence of all paranormal things. And people make this ridiculous leap all the time. 
you know, I went to a psychic medium and he, he completely read my past. And so he gave me predictions about the future. And now they're going to come true because he was acting about my past. I'm like, why do you think that someone's ability to read your past is tantamount to their ability to read your future? What if the past is already written and the future is still open? How could they read something that doesn't exist? You know, the desire to, oh, I be, now I believe in everything. It's true. The Bible is true. The Quran is true. You know, it's all true. Hauntings exist. Meetings exist. Everything that's not physical exists. So it must all be true, right? Another, another more skeptical means of accounting for how people have these abilities when they're, you know, I'm going to show you a, a clip of somebody who may be using cold reading or not, that's for you to decide, is that maybe there are individuals who are very astute to body language and can pick up cues, uh, or maybe they throw things out there like in the room of 20 or 50 people, oh, wait, 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 someone in here knows somebody who died uh, who died a painful death. Okay, that would be everybody in the room. Probably, minus two people, maybe. Um, something with the leg. Oh, yes, you, okay. So it may be one part fishing, it may be one part using cues, and it may not be a function of any actual uh, information or knowledge or insight they're receiving from the spirit world. It's called cold reading. All right, this is just another glossary term. So what are the possibilities? You're watching someone who doesn't know other people. Let's just limit it to the mental, the, the mental abilities for now, the mental psychic uh, mediumship, mental mediumship, um, not the physical mediumship. Okay, that's been largely debunked. But let's just focus on the mental mediumship. So someone walks into a room, which you'll see in a moment, uh, presumably with people they don't know before, and they're 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 stating um, very clear indications about the people who passed away. And, and, and claiming that they could sense their presence. Well, what are the possibilities? Well, A, this is bogus, it's a sham. The person's, a, it's a dirty trick. They're a charlatan. Uh, the, the TV studio is in on it. These are all paid actors, yada, yada, yada. The list goes on. She Googled them all before she came in. She has an inside informant, blah, 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 blah. It's all BS. Sure, perhaps. For the most part, yes. There are certain people that you can watch in action and it's actually ludicrous to believe it's BS unless they might have some inside informant or something, which may be the case, who knows? I mean, there are cases, I think, obviously most of the time it's BS. And it's obvious to anybody who has half a brain. But there are situations that have been vetted throughout history and there are individuals on the planet right now who appear to have integrity and appear to have a gift or certainly um, uh, some kind of extra sensory perception. Well, could that be because they're, they're reading the room and, and, and it's, it's, it's not a sham in the sense that they have knowledge beforehand, but they're just so good at human cues and they're just so good at cold reading that they're sort of generating the illusion of having knowledge of the loved ones of the, uh, uh, of, of, of the dearly departed in the afterlife. Possible. Well, if we start going on the rabbit hole, one could say, no, there's no spirits. That woman's just psychic. And she's just reading my thoughts and my memories. And so she has knowledge about my loved ones who've passed. How come she doesn't tell me about a loved one I can't remember? She's just reading my mind. There's no afterlife. There's telepathic ability, apparently, for some people. Or... The fourth and perhaps most intriguing possibility for this course is that an afterlife does exist. Uh, it is populated by people who are deceased. Those people are part of your life, albeit in a more passive way. There are individuals who have a bona fide ability to, to, to tap into this frequency or this state, this what have you. And they have, because they have that ability, they are holding devices for, for, for individuals who have a message or who would like to come through to speak to a loved one. All right, so we've gone from the most cynical reductionistic approach to the most perhaps empathetic or, 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 or uh, spiritual or, 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 you know, experiential approach. Um, 
And then there's door number five, or dot, 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 question mark. Now, in order for you to formulate an opinion on that, let's base it on uh, an actual reading that we are going to witness in a moment, uh, which I probably cannot upload to YouTube. And so uh, ending the recording now, I think.